Episode 2 begins with Chaman helping Jerem get up off the ground. Dana, watching with fire in her eyes, can't hold back her jealousy any longer. In a sudden burst of rage, she slaps Chaman across the face. The party falls silent, all eyes on them. Realizing what she's done, Dana's face turns pale. Without another word, she dashes out of the room. Chaman goes out to escort Dana to her car. I don't love Jerem, Chaman says. I'm only helping her because she dreams of finding a wealthy partner. That's all. Dana turns around, her eyes filled with a mix of hope and confusion. At the party, Jerem confides in Chaman, saying she thought finding a rich partner might change her fate. But reality is too cruel, she sighs. Chaman, with a playful glint in his eye, tells her, I'll change your reality. Jerem, surprised, laughs a little and says, do whatever you want. Without missing a beat, Chaman pulls her close and plants a kiss on her lips, right in front of everyone at the party. The room erupts in gasps and whispers. Hand in hand, they leave the party, stepping out into the cool night. Outside, Jerem looks at Chaman, puzzled. Why are you helping me? She asks. Chaman grins and says, I want to help you feel loved and never sad again. Jerem's face darkens and she glares at him. Did you kiss me because you pity me? To save me from embarrassment. Chaman chuckles and replies, now that you've kissed me, all the rich guys will be lining up for you. Hearing his silly explanation, Jerem fumes and storms off, hailing a taxi. But as she sits in the back seat, her heart races and her cheeks turn pink. Despite herself, she can't stop thinking about Shaman's kiss and feels a flutter of excitement. Meanwhile, Chaman can't stop thinking about Jerem. In his car, he keeps repeating to himself, I think all women are like lifeless stones, but it's not helping at all. Every time he glances at the passenger seat, he imagines Jerem sitting there, smiling at him. Desperate to clear his mind, Chaman starts singing religious Christian songs, hoping to chase away these thoughts. But even that doesn't work. His heart feels heavy and confused. He sighs and mutters to himself, can I really stand to see her dating another man? The next morning, Chaman and Jerem feel awkward about last night. Chaman, fidgeting nervously, asks, are you still mad at me? Jerem shakes her head. I'm not mad, just a little embarrassed, she admits. With a playful smirk, she adds, I'll just think of kissing you like eating an innkeeper worm. She leaves, leaving Chaman standing there, stunned. As he watches her walk away, Shaman's mind starts to wander. He imagines himself trying on a groom's suit, looking dapper and ready. Suddenly, Jerem walks in and laughs. Don't get too clingy just because of a kiss. She teases, then adds with a grin. By the way, your kiss sucked. While Jerem is brewing tea, Duhong comes up and says he wants to talk to her. Jerem is so surprised that she accidentally pours hot tea on her hand. Quickly, Duhong grabs some ice and gently places it on her burning hand. I'm interested in getting to know you better. I want to meet you at my studio, not here in this club. Then, with a charming smile, he takes a hair clip and carefully puts it in her hair. This is your invitation, he says. Wear it the next time you see me. Jerem blushes, feeling a mix of excitement and nervousness. Duhong gives her one last smile before walking away, leaving Jerem with her thoughts and a fluttering heart. Chaman asks Jerem if she plans to go to Duhong's studio. With a mischievous smile, Jerem replies, Chaman, your kiss is working like magic. But there's a side effect. Chaman looks puzzled. A side effect? Jerem steps closer, her eyes sparkling. I can't stop thinking about kissing you again, she says softly. Shaman's eyes widen, his heart racing. Here? Now, he stammers, glancing around. Jerem nods, her lips curving into a playful grin. Yes, right here. We're the only ones around.
Chaman feels a mix of nervousness and excitement.